Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to Wednesday here on VaporTrails.tv. I'm Dave Dawn, and this lovely effervescentness, loveliness, it's sav. It's sav. And the pair of us are here tonight to bring you a television show of sorts, of kind. It's been a funny week. I'll explain a little bit more after the titles, but for the time being, I think what I should probably say is hello, good evening, and welcome to VT Talk. Yes, indeed, it's, it, it may well be one of those nights because yours truly is sobering up. After celebrating seven, 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 no, <laughs> not sobering up that much. <laughs> After celebrating 35 years of not just happy marriage, but ecstatic marriage yesterday, my wife and I were married for 35 years and I've been getting my eyes tested and I've been getting my hearing tested and it's just generally been one of those weeks where everything's gone kind of strange. I've never been married for 35 years before and I've never been told that I've got glaucoma in the right eye either. But apparently, I'm that far away from it. Oh dear. So there you go, I'm moving to California. <laughs> which is probably the wisest thing I can do, do you not think? I think that's very wise. Move to California, yeah. then everything's sorted. There's nothing to worry about then. Um, but tonight, 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 I have had, I have had, he said, holding it up, I've had a reply from the House of Commons, uh, from my MP, um, actually by Anna Subri, who's a health minister. Um, and it's kind of, it's set a few things in motion, a few things that I, I want to talk about tonight. Um, we've got some housekeeping I need to do, and I think probably it's a good idea to get out the way, do the housekeeping first. Is that right, Saf? I think that's a brilliant idea, do the housekeeping first. Right, we'll do the housekeeping first. Now, first things first, I, I have been told, not that I have experienced it myself this evening, but I have been told that everybody had a bit of a challenge or not everybody, but a lot of people had a bit of a challenge seeing the live video window on the VTTV site tonight. And I'm also hearing and have seen for myself, there's been all kinds of reports of stuttery adverts and God knows what else going on, strange funnynesses that's been happening. Um, and we take that very seriously. So I've been in touch with our content delivery network, i.e. Justin.tv. I've got to be careful how I phrase this because they might be watching and pull the plug. Um, let's just say that those of you that remember the last time we ran a beta test, we're going to be running a beta test and hopefully for not much longer than a week. And once we've got something sorted out, then all of these problems will be removed on a permanent basis. As I say, I've been in touch and basically nothing really has happened. Um, so we might be looking at something in the UK. This is ongoing. We are aware. We are doing our best to fix it, but we want to fix it with something that's going to keep it fixed so that we don't have to go jumping about the place trying to sort things out. And we think we've found the ideal solution, and if we have, that will be tremendous. Now, the next little bit of housekeeping that I need to run through actually involves the effervescent loveliness that is Sav. Her there. You can say I look just by looking. That's her. Now, do you... i tell you what, Sav. Shall I let, shall I let you tell everybody? <laughs> you can do. Right. Um, well... Me and Vape and Daz have took on the task of social media. Social media? I know it sounds dead posh, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I say, are we being very social tonight? Is that Just. Lovely? Very posh. Very posh. So we're trying to get all the social media up and running and a lot more active and would love uh, input from all you guys absolutely love to hear what you'd like to say on there, what you'd like to say on the shows, feedback, everything. So Facebook, Twitter, Google, anything else you can think of, point in the directions of where we should be and we'll be there. I have actually got to see, I've been noticing the good work you've been doing on uh, on Facebook. And what a what a sea change. What an absolute sea change it was. There's, there's yes, all sorts of good stuff. Fun. Yes. Apparently so. So yes, Google Plus, we've got a... What's it called on Google Plus? 
and we've got the community. We've got the Vape Materials TV community page, and we've also got a normal page. Um, we've got the VT TV page on Facebook, and if you can follow her on Twitter, I think we're Vape Materials TV on Twitter, aren't we? I think we're Vape Materials TV on everything everywhere. Um, I think we are. Oh, um, I shouldn't see everything everywhere. That's a, that's a, a, a 4G carrier, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We're Vape Materials Daz, TV everywhere, yes. Vape and Daz is putting everything in the, the chat as to what we are, where we are, so <laughs> this is good. Right, and and will will we can we put links to these all of these different things in the uh, in our forum, the Vapertrails TV. Yes. That's at uh, forum. isn't it? It is. Forum. TV is where that is. So have a look there, and the links will all be in there to how you can find the Facebook and Google Plus, and are we gonna we're gonna major on the. Um, on the community page, is it community pages? Community pages on Google Plus and Facebook rather than like yep. fan pages because I've, yeah. I've never really been comfortable with the idea of a fan page. No, it's not the sort of add us as a friend. It's come along, like the page, and then just put your input in. Uh, it's free that you can just post on there questions, pictures, all that type of thing, and talk to her, get involved. We'd love you to get involved. There you go. So we've got all of these social media things that you can use. And if, if I'm sounding vague, I use Twitter, but I don't know whether I use it properly. Facebook, I kind of, we cross post onto there. The, the, the technology that we use puts the programs up there without us actually having to go there and do it physically. And Google Plus, I think we're putting everything up on Google Plus as well, aren't we? Yes, we are. So, so it can be got to. And, if we get round, we're, we're trying to find ways of using Hangouts. It's something we've been playing with for donkey's ages, using Hangouts in the shows. Mm -hmm. But as yet, we haven't been able to replicate the quality that we think our viewers deserve, have we? We've tried, but it's just, it's not getting there. Not yet, but we'll, we'll get it sorted. I'm sure we'll get it sorted. <laughs> Absolutely certainly we will. Absolutely certainly we will. Um, had we better, do you think, blast on with e cigarette stuff? I think that's probably a good idea, yeah. In that case, we'll take a quick sting while I get hold of this letter from the, uh, the members of Parliament and then David may go into rant mode. And I make no apologies for this, but I've been analysing it. And anyway, we'll see. Back in 12 seconds, exactly. Good as me word, here I am, back in 12 seconds, exactly. Now, like many people, um, at the turn of the year, I got in touch with my MEPs, and I'm in, I'm going to say weekly touch, but more of that later. And I also went, as Dave Kitson did last week, to see my MP in her surgery. Now, my MP is a lass called Bridget Philipson. I maybe shouldn't use the word lass. But anyway, she is. She's, she's Bridget, Bridget Philipson. And here's the reply that she sent me because when I was there, I was talking to her about um, making representations to the MHRA and also to the EU. And it says here, Dear Mr Dawn, it's very formal, normally be who? You. <laughs> As you know, following your visit to my constituency surgery, I made representations on your behalf to the Department of Health regarding electronic cigarettes. I have now received a response and then close a copy for your information. I hope you find this provides some clarification regarding EU proposals and any decisions taken by the MHRA. Now, before we go any further with that little bit, I have to say, you no you're noticing that little kind of cover and letter thing, that it doesn't actually open the door and hold it back for me to walk through and write back. But that's not going to stop me. So shall we get on to the, um, the nitty gritty that has come from um, the Health Secretary, Anna Subri. And again, I'll stick it on, on screen and then you can see it's got the proper, look at that, Department of Health, the Department of Stealth. From Anna Subri MP, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State, 
for public health, what it says up there. Um, and was originally sent to Bridget Philipson on the 31st of January, it's arrived with me. And it says, Dear Bridget, it says, Thank you for your letter of 9th of January on behalf of your constituent, Mr. Dawn of Houghtonley Spring, about electronic cigarettes. Now, you'll, you'll notice I've marked all of this up and I'm, I'm going to switch between and kind of discuss this. There are many different types of electronic cigarette on the market. That's true. That bit is true. However, it says here, because of a lack of evidence on whether they are safe, effective, or made to a consistent standard of quality, the department is not able to endorse electronic cigarettes or recommend their use. Now, I'm, to some degree, I can understand that, but let's carry on, because our friends are in. The World Health Organization also says that there is no evidence that electronic cigarettes can be used to help smokers to quit. And you'll see I've written in my little notes under here, define quit. Now, thinking about this, it says, because of a lack of evidence on whether they're safe, effective, or made to a consistent standard of quality, the department is not able to endorse electronic cigarettes or recommend their use. That's fine. I don't want the Department of Health to be able to endorse them because if they do, that makes them a medicine. And what we're saying is, they're not a medicine. They're an alternative way of smoking without smoking. That's what we're saying. When she goes on about the World Health Organization, also saying that there is no evidence that electronic cigarettes can be used to help smokers to quit, what they're not doing is defining the word quit. Now, the next paragraph kind of goes a little way towards that, but I'm not sure how closely the two tie together. Let's have a look. And Sav, if there's any comments coming in chat, yell them up, will you? Yeah, we've got quite a few comments. Blackwater Vapor saying um, she got a copy of uh, the reply to Jeremy Hunt and it was the letter was the same. Moonlit said, I don't want to use the term quit. I want no, I don't want to use them to quit. I want to use them because I like them. And mm -hmm. Kerry Henderson said, I want to use them to get my nicotine without death. Well, exactly. But the thing is, here's where the problem lies, is that the understanding of the people in the health department for many, many years, the word quit has meant to become nicotine abstinent. And we don't appear to be able to get them to understand that a great many users of electronic cigarettes are saying, I have quit lighting fags up and sucking the fumes in, but I haven't quit the nicotine. That's, I'm, I've, I've harped on about this in the past, I think, and it's, it's because there's a difference in what they understand versus what we understand. So you've got the old quit or die approach, which basically says you become nicotine abstinent or we don't want to know. But that was before e cigs and that was before NRT got what's called an indication for permanent usage as an alternative to smoking cigarettes. But let, let's, let's kind of blast on because this is, it's, it's informing what we need to be doing and how we need to be taking things forward. So let's, let's get back into the, uh, into the letter and go to the next bit because there is, there is a ray of hope, a little ray of sunshine in this. And what it says here, any nicotine containing product, NCP, that claims or implies that it can treat nicotine addiction is considered to be a medicinal product. However, there are a number of NCPs on the UK market that contain nicotine, such as electronic cigarettes, that do not claim to treat nicotine addiction and that can therefore be sold without the safeguards built into the regulation of medicinal products. And you'll see, you might be able to see what I've written down the side there, it implies that there'd be no regulation without a health claim. Now, you can see where there's a little ray of sunshine there for me. If, and I don't know whether it is. That's what one MP, albeit the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Public Health, has said to another MP, she's defined the terms, that because 
they make no claims, it doesn't claim to treat nicotine addiction, then it can therefore be sold without the safeguards built into the regulation of medicinal products. And this can be taken, it can actually be taken two ways. It can be taken that what she's saying is, this is the situation as it stands at the minute, and we don't like it. Or it can be taken that this is the way it stands, and this is the way it will stand when the MHRA has finished with its deliberations and made its announcement. Now, I don't know which way that's going to go. Sav, have you got, uh, you got any thoughts on that? Do you reckon it swings one way or the other? Uh, couldn't possibly say. It's left it so sort of open, as you say, it could go either way. And in my opinion, they do that deliberate to give themselves a way out, depending on how they see other people going. Just they can then go, oh, yeah, that's what we meant by this. You mean wiggle room? Yes. Got a bit of wiggle room. I yes. said in my letter to you on the 31st of January that blah, 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 that, that particular sentence comes in and, you know, and, and you could obviously read from that that what I meant was that we didn't like that and we were going to regulate or we did like that and we were going to leave them alone. Yeah. But at least there is an acknowledgement in that paragraph that they can therefore be sold at present without the safeguards built into the regulation of medicinal products. It's that without the safeguards built into the regulation of medicinal products. That's, that's the little fly in the ointment. He said being very careful not to use his usual terminology for very getting taken off air. Anyway, it, let's, let's carry on and see whether, whether we get anywhere further with this because I find this extremely interesting. I've been spending a lot of time trying to work out what is actually meant by all of this. And it's, it's, it's a joy and a delight. A joy and a delight, he said, telling lies. Anyway, let's go. So what it says, it says here, As your constituent will be aware, in March 2011, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory, Regulatory Agency, MHRA, published the outcomes of a public consultation on whether to bring all NCPs within the medicines licensing, licensing regime. And I've highlighted this. The response to the consultation suggested there was strong support for MHRA regulation, but that there was a need for further information. The MHRA is coordinating further scientific and market research before it makes its final decision on regulation later this year. And you'll see in the side I've written, really? And I've said it, really? Because... I've read all of the responses that were published and I don't think there was strong support for MHRA regulation. In fact, quite the reverse. I think there was strong, what's the word I'm looking for? The opposite of support, opposition to uh, MHRA regulation. So either they don't know what support means or they're taking it that the pharmaceutical companies represent more people than we do, which at the time was probably true. I think at the time they would be lucky if there was 80,000 of us mm -hmm. using e-cigs. And obviously there were more people on, on prescription drugs at that point in time. Um, so maybe, maybe that's right or, or not, I don't know. Again, I, I'm pretty sure that chat will be making a few comments at this point in time because I can see your face. <laughs> There's some that I couldn't possibly read out, but I've got a selection here. Can you not got a sound asterisk? <laughs> right, I, you just I, go. Must, <laughs> yes. I must get a bleep my button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ratfinks has said, they all say they don't help quitting, but they do enable a switch to something healthier. Kerry Henderson said, they're also not defining the term harm reduction or even deciding whether user testimony is valid, whereas it should be mandatory to get to make a decision. Wanderer has said, nobody has said we're using them to quit. We use them because be, to become clear of the 4,000 chemicals that are causing people to die. Can I, just, also, can I just stop so, you with that one? Can you read that yeah. one again, please? Yes. Nobody has said we are using them to quit. We're using them to become clear of the 4,000 plus chemicals that are causing people to die. Unfortunately, that is actually a non-accurate statement, if I can put it that way. There are many people, many people around the forums, and, and I'm talking forums worldwide, that say, I have quit using e-cigs. 
there are people who go on the forums and say, I'm cutting down and then I'll be quitting altogether. Both SIGs and ESIGs. There's lots and lots of people are saying that. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Sorry to interrupt you there, so I'll carry on with the rest. It's absolutely fine. Kerry has also said, if they want to make them a medical product, surely they need to take into account possible long-term use and its possible ill effects instead of scaremongering about a chemical that is no more carcinogenic than her knicker elastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam... <laughs> Curry, I'm coming on your show after my show, so be careful. <laughs> Sam Munro said, I'm treating my coffee addiction with Red Bull. Makes as much sense. And I must find the comment from Vapor Man, which I'll edit slightly. He said, the EU can kiss my rosy red bottom before I give up, give up my A6. I'm guessing he didn't use the word bottom. <laughs> no, he didn't. And I bet he said pink and not rosy red. <laughs> I couldn't possibly see. <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised. Um, look, I tell you what. While while we give people we'll give people time for that to sink in and take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll, I'm going to cover some of the rest of this and then kind of feed in um, some of the ways that we can answer this kind of stuff because I'm seeing a lot of these. It's it's fairly boilerplate, is this? Um, so we'll take a quick break and we'll be back in 1 minute and 49 seconds. I think that's what I timed it at. So don't go anywhere. See you in a bit. back in the room sav in the little yes. box and me not in the little box well in bigger slightly bigger box in pastel blue as you do and that's got nothing whatever to do with me political colors either by the way or the fact that i i rode for oxford because i didn't um let's let's blast on with this um we've gone through the bit about the response to consultation suspecting there was strong support but the next bit it it, it almost it almost scared me a little bit, and it goes over the page, which makes it even more difficult to read sometimes, but let's have a look at it. It says, and I quote, We want to ensure that an effective regulatory framework exists to protect consumers from any electronic cigarette products that fail to meet acceptable standards for quality, safety, and efficacy. And you'll see I've written in the side, efficacy at what? We'll come to that. Reducing the public health impact of smoking remains a priority for the Department of Health. We do not want to reduce the availability of products that help reduce smoking, but we do want to ensure that smokers have access to products that are acceptably safe and that support smokers in reducing the number of cigarettes they smoke or to quit and that is where she's defined quit right 
That's where she's defined quit. She's wanting to reduce the number of cigarettes or stop cigarettes altogether. And if we can get this uh, Anna Subri to acknowledge that stopping lighting fags or pipes or anything else and inhaling the fumes is as good as quitting. It doesn't matter what else you do. That's where we need to get with that. But here's the, here's the bit. We want to ensure that an, an effective regulatory framework exists to protect consumers from any electronic cigarette products that fail to meet acceptable standards for quality, safety and efficacy. And I've said, efficacy at what? I don't know what they want them to be effective at. Do they want them to be effective at delivering nicotine? In which case, I have a number of products here that are very, very effective at delivering nicotine. They deliver lots to me on a daily basis. Loads. And my little bits of lungs and various other bits take out of them what they require. Because I use a nicotine juice that does the job. 36 milligram most of the time and 45 when I need a bigger chuck. It's that simple. So they're definitely effective. Now, the same can't be said for all of them. There are some out there that, quite frankly, I wouldn't give you tuppence for. And we all know what I'm talking about. And we all know what they look like as well. But, you know, safe? Well, how many are there of us in the country now, Sav? A lot. An awful lot. Three quarters of a million or more by mm -hmm. the, uh, the reckoning of um, Ash and, and various other bodies. And has anybody died? Not that I'm aware of. Has anybody been really poorly? Mm. Has anybody's leg dropped off? Mine are both still here. There you go. I'm walking about and breathing as good, well, better than I have done for a great many years. I'm a little bit fatter and a little bit fitter. Being fatter and fitter together, as far as I'm concerned, that's a recipe for a good time. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, so I would have said, yeah, they're acceptably safe. When you consider, and I'm and I don't want to upset anybody by saying this, but as I recall over the last month, there's been people dragged off mountains for going out walking on them when it's been chucking it down with snow and sleet, nice and hail and various other nasty things. Um, what is it, three, four, five folks that's been dragged off mountains? A fair few, yes. Uh, with, with having lost the ability to breathe, shall we say, at the risk of upsetting anybody. And we're not getting that out of ACs. Nobody's died. Nobody's been hospitalised. Nobody's gone do lally. Nobody's gone crackers. Nobody's lost a leg. There hasn't been anything like that. That means, as far as I'm concerned, they're acceptably safe. Now, if I was a professor at a university somewhere and I was a professor of epidemiology, I would be able to sit down and look at all of the what's called anecdotal evidence or empirical evidence. That's the kind of stuff that we read on the forums and the people sharing interviews and all of that kind of thing. And you would be able to come up with a study based on all of that. And there is, in fact, a little bit of a study we'll refer to later, which would say they are acceptably safe. And indeed, all of the experts say exactly that, that they are acceptably safe. Do they support smokers in reducing the number of cigarettes they smoke? I think the answer to that is an unqualified yes as well. If you stick with e-cigs, it definitely drops the number of fags you smoke. Again, Sav, you've dropped the number you smoke. I have, I've, dramatically. I've dropped from 60 down to zero, and I'm fairly sure there'll be people typing into chat there now going, I used to smoke 35 for only the day, and I didn't anymore. And there'll be all that kind of stuff on there as well. If, if such comments exist, I would love it, Sav, if you would uh, read a few of those out, please, because... Was the main consensus that they're saying is most people just one day forgot to light up a cigarette. They just, it wasn't something they planned. Just one day it didn't happen. They just didn't light up the normal cigarette that they would have. Maybe it was the morning one or that one after your dinner and it just didn't happen. Exactly. Well, I... As I've said before, I mean, I, I definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, I never pick these things up to quit. I've told the story before, I don't know how many times, lad came into the studio, had what looked like a fag, I haven't got one handy, dangling out the corner of his mouth. I blew me stack, and you kind of do that, there'll be a two and a half thousand pound fine, I'll lose me business, blah, 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 blah. 
Um, and it turned out to be what he called a plastic tab, as the vernacular up here would have it. Um, tried it, thought I could get away with it, and that was coming up to four years ago, to be four years in May. And since that point in time, I've had a slight relapse when I just couldn't get anything to work while I was on holiday. And what did I do? Did I send home for more supplies? No, I went to the shop and bought some fags. Remember that one? Remember that one, because that's important for all sorts of reasons. I've got to be, again, I'm careful how I'm wording this. I didn't go seeking more juice and more batteries and stuff like that. They weren't working, I bought some fags. With that one relapse, four years, haven't, just haven't bothered, you know? And it wasn't because I wanted to pack in. Didn't, never did, never wanted to. And that comes on to something else that's, uh, that's in here as well. In fact, let's get there because I was starting to rant there. <laughs> I, I shouldn't rant. I, I, sh I just shouldn't rant. So let's, let's, let's go to the next bit. Um, and this is, a lot of people have had this as well, but again, I'm, I'm kind of marking things up as we go. The next paragraph is not massively important. It says, the government will be reviewing the proposals in the draft tobacco products directive carefully with the ongoing work of the MHRA in mind. Now, I do not know what the hell that means. The government will be reviewing the proposals in the draft tobacco products directive carefully with the ongoing work of the MHRA in mind. Does that mean, then, that the Department of Health thinks that what the EU is proposing goes too far or doesn't go far enough or is just completely out of kilter with what the Brits want or has Dave, our beloved leader, been down there and said, look, we're coming out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Or what? I just don't know. I can't work out what that actually means. But let's let's blast through it. And actually, if anybody out there has got any ideas, let us know. I, 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 I have to say, I wonder whether it means the MHRA is going to come back and say that seeing as how our lords and masters in Brussels are making a decision on that, we're not going to actually make a decision this year, but we're going to wait and see what the EU decides to do. If that's the case, I'm a happy bunny, because that's going to give us, well, I reckon 18 months minimum of being able to get stocks that we need. Um, I don't know. I, just, I would like to think that was what it means, but I've been wrong before many, many, many times. And I know this to be true because my wife has told me I've been wrong before. Many times. As Sam and Rose just said, whatever it means, they already have an agenda. Uh, yes, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think you're absolutely right. There's already an agenda. So I think, I think it's all but decided. But it might not be. It might not be. We've got more to go. Anyway, um, camera foo, camera foo, camera foo. There you go. The proposals will be discussed by the Member States and by the European Parliament and will be subject to change during this process. The legislation is unlikely to be adopted before 2014 or to come into effect before 2015-2016. Now, that in itself is kind of good news because it, it, what it is saying is that the European stuff isn't going to take effect. So even if they do go down this four milligram route, this completely idiotic and stupid four milligram route. That's not going to hit until 2015, 2016. But we don't know what the MHRA is going to be deciding before that, if indeed they are. This is an open-ended bit. However, there's more. Than, and this kind of gets importance because it does inform where we need to be going, perhaps. And it says... The department is aware that the majority of smokers want to quit, and you'll see, that's there, I've highlighted it. And free NHS help is available to help them stop smoking for good. I'm seeing an agenda here. It encourages smokers to use licensed nicotine replacement therapies such as patches, gums, inhalators, lozenges or mouth sprays, these are the new ones, as the safest source of nicotine in place of smoking. Now then. And here's where I want feedback from all kinds of people, please. Where it says the department is aware that the majority of smokers want to quit. I don't think that's true. I have never yet spoken to a smoker 
that sit well I have odd one or two but the majority of smokers I know and I was one of them don't want to quit if they did if they seriously did want to quit i.e pack it in become nicotine abstinent they would have done it that's simple they would have done it and they haven't there's a rough estimate 10 or 11 million smokers or let's say nicotine users in the country and if the majority of them wanted to become abstinent they would have become abstinent god knows we've been berated for long enough by government telling us that it's bad for us it's going to kill you your cigarettes are going to grow great pink things out of them all of that kind of stuff it's true to say that in terms of the battle of the propaganda everybody believes what they've been told and if they still don't quit then really seriously honestly they don't want to it's that easy any comments on that one sav yeah we had a lord come through of no no they've never wanted to quit not now not then and a couple of comments um kerry henderson said only person she knows that wanted to quit was her dad but that was because her mum told him he wanted to and very boring has said most smokers i've ever met never wanted to quit and still don't the ones that want to quit have keep going i haven't got anything i'm done um yeah there's a lord smokers don't believe most of the health claims now anyway is what blackwater vapor is saying uh, Steve 37 UK says smoking kills but people keep smoking they stop when they want to and not before um, John Bomb 1 says I got more chance of becoming the Pope before quitting his nicotine <sighs> right I, I, um, I have to apologise for some reason which I don't understand I have lost all sound into my earphone so I can't actually hear what you're saying Sav no problem I'll oh, do sound language I've got you back I've got you back oh, now I'm yeah back. I went and had a fiddle she Sav would be able to say that I was having a little bit fiddle with the machine that she's on while she was talking which was why I said keep going <laughs> yes you were hidden behind behind my screen I yes, couldn't see I'm you I'm sorry about I do apologise I do apologise occasionally we'll have these technological strangenesses and I still don't understand why um, but I'm, I'm taking it that basically everybody was saying more or less the same thing and that mm -hmm. smokers just don't want to quit no and if, if, if they want to quit, they will. Yes, exactly right. So I, I just don't believe that piece of propaganda at all. However, um, where, where is this licensed nicotine replacement therapy like patches, gums, inhalators, lozenges and mouth spray the safest source of nicotine in place of smoking? Because I hear all kinds of horror stories about mouth ulcers from the sprays, about rabid heartburn and about... And he's a good one with patches, right? Young'uns messing about with them didn't realise that they had nicotine in them and just stuck 24 on somebody's back and nearly killed him. He was in hospital. It took him three days to get him stabilised and sorted out so his heart wasn't just going doof, doof, doofing out the window. So just to reiterate what we were saying before, so far in, well, let's say five years of ECG use that we've all been involved in, nobody's died nobody's been hospitalized but with nrt people have been hospitalized and very nearly died and yet still we've got idiots trying to effectively ban e -cigs. something wrong somewhere let's finish this letter off unless there's anything coming up there because i can see you're nodding again um there's all sorts coming up um i did have a comment that i had from earlier um yeah it was a question actually that came in from swifty mctavish who said but if this decision is left for another 18 months or so, won't there be too many people vaping to just put an outright ban on it? Ah, now, you see, yes, here's the point. And this is a brilliant point, Swifty. And I've got to say, brilliant handle, by the way. Swifty McTavish, it's brilliant. I love that. Um, here's the thing. You know, you may remember that what it must be, about two months ago, we, we on VT Talk, we featured some video of Carl Phillips speaking at Health in the City, where he was talking about the tipping point. And you'll have seen more and more references to this tipping point as time, gone, as time has gone by. And yes, you are ever so right. If we have 5 million people in the UK all using e-cigs, in other words, half of the smoking population, all using e-cigs, then that is a sizable chunk of people. It's a sizable chunk of people that cannot be ignored. 
And I would go so far as to suggest that the meteoric rise, which it has to be in order to get to those kind of numbers, would be helped an awful lot by people using something like this, i.e. an ego with a whatever, it really doesn't matter, on top, out and constantly using so they can be seen. I was sat yesterday while I was getting my eyes tested going, she said, what can you, is it better with one or with two? Two. And just, you know, taking a drag every so often, wherever. If they don't berate you, just do it. I mean, if they say would, would really rather you didn't, stop. But otherwise, get them used. Get people used to seeing them. The more people that get used to seeing them, the more chance there is of people taking them up. And this is being modelled up by a man that knows what he's talking about. So there we go. Tell you what, we'll take another swift break and we'll hit the last paragraph of this letter back and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it and, and it might help folks answer back. And, and I'll tell you as well some advice I've been given by an MEP and the request that's been made by that MEP. Um, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but you'll love what you're going to hear. We'll be back in a minute and a bit. Don't go anywhere. Yes, and we're out of the adverts and I can hear yourself again now. It's good. It's all good. You you said you had a question before we finish this little piece off that had come in. I did, yes. Um, it's a question from Moonlit and he says, what's happened to that conference that Dave was going to be talking at? Has that happened yet? No. No, it happens on the 25th of February, which coincidentally happens to be the very day that the European Parliament starts considering the nonsense that Dali authored and... Uh, what do you call him? Borg? Resistance is futile, he would like to think. Well, he's, he's going to get some resistance and that the Borg's put forward. So it's the very date that it starts. I'm speaking at this conference in London on the 25th of February and I'm hoping we'll get some video footage from it. Um, I've, I've, I was told that my job is to upset a few people and I suspect I might because there's going to be some tobacco controllers there. They may not like what I've got to tell them. Well, they won't like what I've got to tell them because I'm going to tell them in a way that they won't like. It's that simple. Bottom line. I've, I'm not pulling any punches on this one. I think what's going on with the tobacco control people worldwide is nothing short of murder. I, and I'm not one for using hyperbole like that, but I really do think it's nothing short of murder. Um, but never mind, because actually, when you think about it, Professor John Britton agrees with that, and you might say that a bit later on if we ever get time to get to it. I'm enjoying myself tonight. I love picking this kind of stuff to bits, you know? Let's, yeah. let's do the last paragraph, and then, we can, uh, and then we can kind of blast on from there. So the last paragraph of this says, With regard to licensing the MHRA and the European Agency for the evaluation of medicinal products, YAMP, 
have responsibility for the issuing of marketing authorizations licenses, monitoring and taking corrective action for medicinal products. And I've highlighted that bit where it says, this is not a matter for parliament, right? Of course it is. Although the MHRA is accountable to both parliament and the public. Oh, it's accountable to us, it's nice to know. Further information about the licensing process is available on the MHR's despicable website at www.mhra.gov.uk. It says, and this is important, bottom bit there, as the MHRA is independent of the Department of Health, Mr. Dawn may wish to contact the agency directly with his concerns about the views of stakeholders and the contact details are. And that's all there for people to see. Now that's actually quite a telling little, uh, a little sentence. It might be a hint. I hope it is. As the MHRA is independent of the Department of Health, and I don't understand how it can be really, but never mind, Mr. Dawn, for Mr. Dawn Reed, you, everybody that is, may wish to contact the agency directly with his concerns about the views of stakeholders. And then the contact details are there. Now, the two things that come out of that. Firstly, it is a matter for Parliament. And if they think that it isn't a matter for Parliament, we need to make it a matter for Parliament. And the way to make it a matter for Parliament is quite simple. Write to your MP. Write to your MP at writetothem.co.uk, dead easy to find. Get onto them and get them told of what you feel about ACs. Tell them your story. I would advise that you're a little bit selective in how you use your words. Um, as in, if, you, if you're going to use the word quit, use it in the full sentence saying, I have used e-cigarettes to quit lighting tobacco and inhaling the fumes. Don't let them get the impression that you're using e-cigs to become nicotine abstinent because that just feeds into the quit or die approach that so many of them have had for so damn long. And we really don't want that to go any further. In fact, what I would suggest you do, if I'm going to be absolutely right about it, is get across to clivebits.com because if you go there, you will see an absolutely cracking piece of prose and some wonderful advice. Let me just show you the page in question. It's called the counterfactual, but it's, it's talking about medicines, regulation for e-cigs, when caution can kill. Let's make it all a little bit bigger. And in actual fact, I'm, I'm not going to go through it word by word. I don't think we need to because I think a lot of people will have read it by now and a lot of people will see where the, 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 the bullet points are. Here's one, for instance, here in red. Could excessive regulation now put the brakes on the developments and even take these products off the market? Could the concerns of regulators end up harming or killing the very people they are meant to help? Now, if you think about it, that's a good point to be making, if you think about it. We know a lot of people would go towards looking for bringing juice in via the back door, shall we say. But if they couldn't do that, if that wasn't available, how many people would go back to fags? Let's just blast on with it a little bit. Um, if you go through all of this, and as I say, I'm not going to go through it line by line. It is a superb piece of text. But the bottom is what Clive has suggested needs to be happening in the UK. And as you can see, it is, it, it's a very, very long document. But how should the directive change to support the development of e-cigarettes as an alternative to smoking? This is, without doubt, the most important part of it. The overall change required is that these products should be regulated as recreational consumer products with cigarettes as their main comparator, not as medicines for treatment of smoking with NRT as the main comparator. To do this, the TPD, and for TPD, read MHRA, should be revised to do six things differently with respect to NCPs, and for NCPs, read ACs. Drop the requirement for mandatory medicine regulation and allow this to become an opt-in for manufacturers who wish to make a therapeutic claim. Two-tier system. Remove the arbitrary and poorly specified threshold in Article 18.1. It is not necessary. Reassert the basic consumer protections apply 
and refer to or restate these. Create a basis for a future light touch non-medicines regulatory regime, for example through a CE marking, commission decision or new regulation or directive specific to NCPs, the consumer protection tools exist outside medicines regulation. Add a meaningful mandatory label proportionate to the risk and encouraging smokers to switch. Design a proper transitional arrangement that will not wipe out incumbents with no guarantee of adequate new entrants. Now, that's what Clive has suggested, those six points. And if, if not just the EU, but if the MHRA also did just what Clive has suggested there, that would give a two-tier system. Medicine for those that want medicine and recreational for those that don't want medicine. In other words, people who do not want to quit. If you want to quit, go and get the NRT version of an e-cig. If you don't want to quit, get the recreational version. Either way, and it's there purely and simply as a marketing tool. I think we already know, we do, in fact we do already know, that e-cigs are as safe as they need to be. They do not to be any, need to be any safer than they are. They are safe enough, and that's all they need to be, safe enough. Like I said, 750,000 people in the UK are using them and nobody died. That's a lot of people. If they had a clinical trial that big and nobody died, no matter what it was for, they'd be pumping it into everybody that had whatever. Absolutely guaranteed 100%. So here's what I would like everybody to do, and it's what I'm doing, and it's, it's really why I've done this piece, this show. I would like you, please, to reply to any letters that you've had from MPs or MEPs that have stated anything like what we've been through tonight, and use the replies that are contained in what Clive Bates's blog at clivebates.com has said. He covers everything in there and there are some lovely counters as to what is going on. But seek clarification. If, if you like, get involved in a dialogue with your MP. This is just purely from the MHRA point of view. At the same time, get a hold of those recommendations from Clive Bates's blog and send them to the MHRA. MHRA, tell them you are a stakeholder and you would like to have a say in their current deliberations that you have been informed by the, and I'll give her a proper title because I cannot remember what it is off the top of my head, by the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Public Health and she said this herself. As the MHRA is independent of the Department of Health, Mr Dawn may wish to contact the agency directly with his concerns about the views of stakeholders. I think that's an invitation for everybody to write to the MHRA. In fact, it explicitly is. So do it. Write to the MHRA separately from MPs and MEPs and let them know you ain't happy about medicinal regulatory instruments being put together for the ACIGs because you don't need them. They're not necessary. And quote those six points from Clive's blog. There they are. One to six. Quote those. If that's what he's suggesting for the EU, that's good enough for the MHRA as well. Get those in there and let's, let's, let's make them work for their money. Let's get them told. If you haven't already written to your MEP or your MEP, please, please do it. Don't think that because big guns like Clive Bates and Carl Phillips and Jerry Stimson are involved with all of this, that you don't need to do anything you do. And I'll tell you how I know is because I'm in weekly contact with an MEP who has a lot of sway in this kind of thing. And he has asked me to ask you to write more letters to MEPs. The more they get, the more notice they will take. And we need to do this. It's not something that can be done by anybody else. We have got to do this. Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can do it on your behalf. It needs everybody to stand up and be counted. And it's not a case of going and signing a petition. We reckon that there are close to a million, between 750,000 and a million e-cig users in the UK. And the petitions are stalling at like 12,000, 16,000. It, it, it doesn't give the right message. But writing to your MEP, because so few people do, every one letter that goes to an MEP is worth at least 
10,000 signatures on a petition. Seriously. And whether you're in the UK, Germany, Belgium, France, Spain, it doesn't matter where you are. The Netherlands, if I've missed anybody out, I'm sorry. But wherever you are, do the same. Write to your MEP. Get them told. Use that blog. Use those six points. I'm going to shut up, Sav, because I'm starting to rant and rave and I maybe shouldn't do it. But we need to do this. Everybody needs to do this. Over to you. Tell me what people are saying, please. A lot of people are requesting that can this information be put somewhere on the forums, on Facebook or something, so they can go back to it and know exactly what they have to do. So, yeah, we can get that done. Um, there's one question that came in, which... I don't know the answer to, so I will ask you. And it was from Ratfinks, and she says, if we get out of the EU, are we free and easy, or do we still have more threats? Oh, we've still got the threats. We've still got the threats. If we do come out of the EU, it's not going to happen before 2017. And trust me, anything that's been enacted as an EU directive that the current lot or any following lot thinks might do them some good that's going to stay where it is. They'll not chuck all the EU directives out just like that because we've gone out. Anything that they think they can use, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say for their own benefit, but anything that they think would be useful to UK legislation for whatever purpose, which is probably a better way of putting it, they'll hang on to. Um, you know, it, it, it's as you, it, it's the same with a change of government. It's exactly the same. Stuff that they agree with, they hang on to. Stuff they don't agree with, they chuck out. And th there are enough anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots in the UK, some right numpties, like that woman that was on the end of the BBC piece, that I would just take them off the shelves. Numpty. Absolute numpty. Um, there's enough people like her that would be putting the pressure on for, for the, the EU stuff to kind of stay in place. And we, we just, we don't want that. It's, it's not necessary. Sorry, Sav, I went on too long. What else have we got? It's quite all right. Swifty McTavish has said, so I had a good guess. How long do you think we have until they make a decision? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how long we've got until we need to take action. About 35 seconds. In, well, no, make it two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes until we need to take action. If we don't take action, it could all be done and dusted inside six months. It is actually that simple. And I've, that's, that's been confirmed. If we do nothing, if there is no opposition, it could be all done and dusted inside six months. If we create havoc, if we write to every MEP and keep on writing to them, and every time they come back with the bull crud, whoops, if they keep on coming back with the rubbish that we've seen from some of the replies, answer them. Go back to them and keep on telling them. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Keep emailing them. It costs now in electricity. It doesn't cost that much in stamps. Keep on at them until they come to realise that there's, there's, what is it, five, six million people throughout Europe that are not going to be stamped on like a whole load of bugs under the feet of the people in Brussels who think they can rule our lives because they can't. And that's, that's, I'm asking you as a friend, everybody that's watching, I'm going to call you a friend. Please, 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 please do it for you. Not for me. I've done it. Do it for you because if you don't do it for you, nobody else is going to. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. You've got to do it for you. Need I say more? Sav, last word. Anything from chat? Uh, the last word, the last comment I've got here is a comment that came from Vapeologist, and he just said, medicine is for the sick. Us vapers are happy people who just want to get on and live our lives. Exactly right. We happy little fluffy bunnies, happy with our e-cigs and happy with our nicotine. And with that in mind... That's not a bombshell because everybody knows it. Sav and I are going to bid you farewell and say a big thanks to Daz and Kat in the background who have been taking care of chat and timings and stuff like that. Big thumbs up for them. So from all of us here, everybody on the team at VTTV, until we see you next time, take care. Vape hard, write a lot. See you next time. Bye-bye.